Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of Steeler Nation, we did it. We survived the harshness of winter. We survived the cold eight long months of not making a preview video for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And guess what, guys? It's early September, and my previews are back for at least the next four months, a.k.a. Football is back. It's week one, and it's 49er week. What is going on? Good Thursday afternoon, everybody. I am Mac, and I am back with another video. As always, do me a favor. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow on Instagram. Link in the description box below. The San Francisco 49ers head on to Pittsburgh to face... My Pittsburgh Steelers this Sunday afternoon. A game that I will not be streaming because I'm going to be at a watch party, but I anticipate streaming next week's game. But um, that's another topic for later. But yeah, let me uh, just dive into this real quick. This is my preview. Got a lot to say about the 49ers. And first things first, I've always said the 49ers are kind of like our little brother in a way. I always had a lot of respect for the 49ers, you know, great historic franchise, lots of great names out there. They were the team of the 80s, obviously, with Joe Montana and Jerry Rice winning four Super Bowls. Uh, they had some awesome teams in the 90s as well. And, you know, they're always one of those franchises that just knows how to build from the ground up and make a formidable opponent, you know. Think of all-time greats for the 49ers. You know, you got your Joe Montanas and your Jerry Rices, obviously. But then you, but then the next person will go like, oh, Steve Young and Ronnie Lott or Roger Craig or even Patrick Willis. Then you got T.O. Jeff Garcia in the early 2000s was really good. Bryant Young, Frank Clark, or, um, uh, Frank Gore, excuse me. Randy Cross, Y. Tittle, um, Dwight Clark. Dave Wilcox, you name it. The list goes on and on for the four. John Taylor, the list goes on and on for the 49ers. Just a overall awesome roster and an overall great, um, great historic, proud franchise of producing winning players. In my opinion, the 84 49ers are the greatest NFL team of all time. But hey, who was that one team in 84 that managed to beat the 49ers despite the 49ers winning the Super Bowl that year, going 15-1? and Who was the one team that managed to beat them? The Pittsburgh Steelers beat the 49ers that year. But this ain't trash talk. This ain't, um, you know, all that stuff. This is just a preview. So let's get on right to it. I look at this 49er team. And they got really good continuity all around. You know, they're a really good, aggressive team. They're a hard-working team. They know how to move the chains, and they know how to move down the field. And with me, it all starts with their offense right here. Their offense came on the scene last year, and it was a very productive bunch. Starts with CMC, in my opinion. He's a dynamic playmaking player who's both efficient in both the run and the pass. And when he was on the field last year, 49ers were averaging 30 points a game last year when he played. Of course, he can't do it all on himself because the 49ers, like I said, um, they are just real aggressive when it comes to moving down the field. And they got a lot of one-on-one -on -one space winners. So when it's not CMC doing the bulk, they get a guy like Brandon Ayuk. Then you got a guy like Elijah Mitchell. Then you got Mason on there. Um, they're just a really good ground and pound type of offense right there, which is where I think our rush defense is going to have to come in the mix right here, which is something that we have heavily improved in this offseason. So it kind of seems also like the uh, 49ers are 100% certain that Brock Purdy is going to be our guy. Because they just traded Trey Lance to the Dallas Cowboys last week. And, you know, I kind of feel for Trey Lance a little bit. He never really did get, you know, a solid 
chance with San Francisco, and now he's probably going to have to wait at least one more year down in Dallas while Dak Prescott's going to be the starter this year. So Brock Purdy, I mean, all the power in the world to him. He had a great run last year, but my main question with Brock Purdy is that is he 100% good to go for this game? I want to see a fully healthy, ready Brock Purdy in this game because if you remember in the NFC Championship, he suffered, I think it was a UCL injury, and because of that and because of his um, timetable for return, he's had limited throws all training camp and all uh, preseason as well. So Brock Purdy, you know, it kind of seems like if the 49ers are going to win this game, they got to pretty much do what they do as far as their offense goes with being aggressive. Other, <clears throat> excuse me, other big guys you got to worry about. George Kittle, obviously, one of the best tight ends in the game. But George Kittle's banged up a little bit as well. He's, you know, he has a reputation of working through injuries and he has returned. But still, even if George Kittle plays and he's a little bit banged up, that's something that you got to take into consideration right there. Debo Samuel, one of the most innovative players in the game as well. The thing about San Francisco's offense with me is that, you know, they throw short, but they run long without making it, without taking a really big risk down the field. And they will beat you up with their run after ability type of offense right there. They're a really good yak kind of offense right there. And that's something that's going to keep any kind of defense honest with themselves, which is what I think our defense is capable of doing, which is why I think this is going to come down to defense versus defense. Who's going to blink first on defense? If you're old school like me and you're just a sucker for low scoring defensive standoffs, then this is your kind of game right here. Because you take a look at the meat of the 49ers, it is their defense. They built up probably the most efficient defense in the league. Last year, 16.3 points allowed per game last year for San Francisco. They led the league in that category. Basically, you can say they were the number one defense in the league. They did lose D'Amico Ryans in the offseason, but I think Steve Wilkes is a pretty good replacement for him. He's a good defensive-minded uh, defensive coordinator, so I think the 49ers don't really got to worry about that a whole lot. Um, their front is very physical and they're very versatile they run a four-man front as you guys all know and it you know you got your guys like Eric Armstead up there former Steeler Javon Hargrave has joined the team from the Philadelphia Eagles rang up 11 sacks last year and he's a guy I made a whole video about this about a week or so after the Super Bowl I really do miss a guy like Javon Hargrave I you know speaking of guys that never really got like a significant opportunity with the franchise they were at. I always kind of felt like Javon Hargrave didn't get a fair chance with us as well, and we kind of dumped him off too early. And look at Javon Hargrave now. He's one of the most efficient um, run stoppers in the league, and obviously he can ring, he can ring up double-digit sacks as well. So good for him, but hopefully not good enough for Sunday. Then, of course, you got the main catalyst on that defense right there in Nick Bosa, Defensive Player of the Year. And he's just a guy that attacks on both sides. 18 and a half sacks last year for Nick Bosa. And I think he hit the quarterback 48, 49 times, somewhere around there. Basically, he hit the quarterback almost 50 times last year. So Nick Bosa definitely is the cream of the crop of this team. However, you know, as any Steeler fan can test, holding out is not the type of way to where you're going to get a lot of money thrown at you. So I do anticipate Nick Bosa to play. I think everyone anticipates him to play, and I want him to play. You know, I want to play the San Francisco team when they're at their fully best. I want us to be like, you know, Goku versus Vegeta, you know. I want us to be at our best. And I want them to be at their best. So I anticipate Nick Bosa to play. So stop holding out. I can just tell you right now, it's not the way to do it. 
The way to do it is that you turn in a 2021 type of season for T.J. Watt, where you pretty much... I'm not saying you got to tie the all-time sack record, okay? Don't get that mistaken. But you got to ball out. So I don't think Nick Bose's holdout is going to, you know, go for the long term. But I do anticipate him to play. And then you take a look at their defensive back. Again, loaded. You got Gibson at defensive back. He is a really good playmaker up there. Then, of course, you also got um, something else I forgot to mention about their four-man. How could I forget these two? Fred Warner and Greenlaw up front to stop the run right there. Those are two really good, efficient playmakers. They've been, they, they've been with the franchise for some time now, and their bread and butter is just stopping the run dead in their tracks. And then, of course, the guy on defense... That probably scares me the most, other than Nick Bosa, Ufunga, their safety, who gives me serious Troy Paul Malu type of vibes. Almost the same position. He can play strong safety. He's a physical player. He can generate safety blitzes, and he comes away with good athletic plays, more often than not leading in the turnovers. That dude is just an absolute stud. You know, basically the 49ers, they just got a loaded defense, loaded defensive back. You can throw Ward up there as well. So, I mean, overall across the boards, this San Francisco team is just star-studded. They're physical, they're grimy, and they will punch the ball right down your throats. Then you got to take a look at us. So, in order for us to come away with this win, you know, Kenny Pickett has to have a big game here. I mean, that just kind of goes without saying. With the offseason that he had and the preseason that he had, he's been dropping dimes in the bucket, mainly to uh, George Pickens and Pat Fryermuth. But Kenny Pickett has really improved his skill set in the offseason and in his uh, preseason as well, where he was using his legs, he was improving his throwing mechanics, and he was... Just overall, not afraid to uh, take a shot down the field. He was throwing some nice passes and nice bombs down the field, man. But against a San Francisco team like this, you can't take a whole lot of risks like that. you got to tire him out a little bit, which is where I think Najee Harris comes in as well. I'm just going to say it with Najee, okay? I'm starting to lose a little patience with him because he's just doing nothing but kind of Doing the same thing that he's been doing with, with since his rookie season, which is missing wide open holes that the O line provides him, and he's just kind of dancing around looking for you know the best opportunity when the best opportunity is right in front of his face, which is why I said that Jalen Warren. I think that he needs to be the RB one. I'm really leaning towards that right now. At the very least, have a running back by committee type of game here. You got to beat San Francisco at their own game here. Split carries between Najee Harris, Jalen Warren, and Anthony McFarland Jr. for this game right here. Um, obviously, George Pickens and Pat Fryermuth, those are big X factors for this game as well. How are the 49ers pass how's the 49ers pass defense gonna be able to stand up to big playmakers like those who have been ringing up big plays in preseason and that the Steelers are very high on as well? Muth in particular has been a favorite target for Kenny Pickett all along. Kind of get like I said, kind of gives me Big Ben and Heath Miller type of vibes right there where he was relying heavily on his security blanket. So, those are your X factors on offense right here. Then you got to take a look at again, defense versus offense this time favoring us. Our front versus San Francisco's running backs. That's a big matchup in this one where I think Larry Ogunjobi and Keanu Benton are going to shine in this one. Like I said, the 49ers are dynamic, and they are going to punch the ball right down your throat with CMC, Brand Ayuk, and Elijah Mitchell. So I think Larry Ogunjobi, Cam Hayward even, and Keanu Benton have to step up in this game big time as well. And also you got to, uh, you also got to make life rough for Brock Purdy here, okay? 
I'm not saying take advantage of the fact that he's banged up in this one, but I am saying you got to make him work here. You know, obviously we know what the Steelers can do with a pass rush. That's where T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith comes in. But also, what about Landon Roberts? He's coming off a 100-tackle season down in Miami, and I think that's going to be a big bolster for not just the run defense as well, but I think it's also going to provide some pass rush right there. Is Nick Herbig going to get some playing time here as well? Rang up six sacks in the preseason. Quan Alexander, former 49er, I should say, Quan Alexander. He is one of them guys that can drop into Nick into a zone and man coverage defense right there. So there is a lot of question marks right here as to who's going to have the better defensive kind of game because these two defenses are very similar. Where the 49ers usually run a four-man front, we're we're uh, starting to rely heavily on the nickel the uh, nickel blitzes and playing strong man-to-man -man defense right here. These are both defenses that are going to make every kind of offense and offensive line, for that matter, be honest. And you also got to take a look at matchups like Patrick Peterson versus Debo Samuel. That's going to be a good one-on-one -on -one right there. Levi Wallace on Brandon Ayuk. And I think the one that everybody is anticipating for this one, George Kittle going up against Minka Fitzpatrick. As far as the offensive line matchups right here go for us, like I said, I think Dan Moore Jr. has to be at left tackle for this one because I just don't, I'm not in favor of putting Broderick Jones up against a guy like Nick Bosa who can attack from both sides. However, the 49ers offensive line, they got to be on their toes right here. Why? Because TJ Watt, as I said, he's healthy, knock on wood. He's healthy for this game. He attacks from the right side more often than not. And I think with San Francisco's O-line kind of looking a little off, not bad, but a little bit off as far as the right side goes, I think that might be a big mismatch right here. But overall, I mean, I think these two teams are very similar defensively. I think the 49ers one-up us in offense because they have more experience. But, I mean, overall, you take a look at these two teams right here, it can honestly be anyone's game right here. So, with all that being said, these are my keys to victory on both offense and defense right here. I'm going to only have two keys to victory per game this year, offensively and defensively. So, my keys to victory here. As far as the offense goes, minimize your negativity. Basically, beat the 49ers at their own game. They take care of the ball real well, have some good continuity up on that deep, on that uh, offense right there. We know the kind of head coach that Kyle Shanahan is. Works very well with quarterbacks. And now that we're starting to open up the playbook a little bit more for Kenny Pickett and that these players have stepped up to the reins in the offseason and preseason, which we're really high on coming into this game, you got to expose it a little bit. Kenny Pickett has to be careful in this game. He can't make any rookie mistakes because I'm just going to say it here, guys, okay? I'm not giving Kenny Pickett the uh, the tri you know, the uh, tricycle treatment anymore, if you know what I mean. This is his second season in the league. He's had more than enough experience to be a starter in this league. If he makes a mistake, it's not going to be the, well, he's just a second-year quarterback. Well, he's just a young player. No. We're all expecting Kenny Pickett to take that next step forward and to take that and, you know, to up up his game, which he's off to a great start to. He has to do better. And this is a big chance for him, a, a big test for him right here against one against possibly the best defense in the league. So minimize negativity. Don't do any unnes don't commit any unnecessary turnovers. Don't have any unnecessary penalties. And you gotta be able to run the ball efficiently. Like I said, continuity up on your offense right there. Open up the damn playbook for this game and get creative against a very, very loaded defense right here. My key to victory on defense for us basically is the same. Be physical, attack on that 
attack that right side, have a nice four-man front. The nickel blitzes would come in handy as well, and you got to tackle well here. Kittle's a very hard guy to tackle. That's where a guy like Landon Roberts and Minka have to come in here. you got to be able to tackle well. Use your depth for this game. And you just got to smack him across the face. You got to rough up um, Brock Purdy in this one. And you got to plug up that hole as far as their run game goes. I've already said it a million times. 49ers like to run the ball right down your throat. Rush defense has to come up clutch in this game here. And you got to cover on all aspects right here. So there you have it. This is my preview for the 49ers. Catch me for Saturday afternoon. I will be hanging out with my man CG Ruthless, who is a 49er fan. Him and I are going to do a two-hour collab on Saturday. We're going to talk about the game. He's going to discuss his keys to victory. I'm going to discuss my keys to victory with him. We're just going to have a collab. So be um, so. Stay tuned for that on Saturday afternoon. But yeah, it's week one. Football is back. Steelers and the 49ers. This is going to be a great game, man. I am absolutely pumped to see this play. All the great matchups right here. All the great one-on-ones. All the physicality. It all starts Sunday afternoon. Like, comment, subscribe. And let me know what Jins think about this game right here. Who comes away victorious? Do we pull off the upset? Or do the 49ers come in here and do they show, yeah, you know, we're clearly the better team. Hopefully, it's the former with us. And let's get this show on the road. San Francisco, good luck to you guys. I got to say, I'm a, Nick, I'm a big Nick Bosa fan. Not Sunday. I'm a big Ufanga fan, not Sunday. I'm a big Fred Warner fan, not Sunday. I'm a big George Kittle fan, not Sunday. I'm a big CMC fan, just not on Sunday. Catch my drift. I wish the 49ers luck for the season, but just not on Sunday against my guys. Let's see who the better team is, and let's see who's got the cojones on Sunday afternoon. Again, like, comment, subscribe. Follow on Instagram. This is Mac checking on out for the day. Here we go, Steelers. Here we go. And I'm out.